This lens is gonna give you a look that is gonna be so different from modern lenses. It may be worth picking up just for that alone. Happy New Year, everyone. Hope you had a great end of the 2023 season. And I'm back talking about a lens I've had in my hands for the past number of months. I'm a little bit late to the party with this one, but always room for another opinion, right? Right. This is from Light Lens Lab. This is the 50 millimeter F2 Speed Pancro 2 or SP2 as they like to call it. And this is an homage lens from the Speed Pancro from Cook in the 1940s. A very prominent lens, historical lens for cinema back in the day. Light Lens Lab has taken those design cues and kind of brought it more to the photography side of things versus cinema. Again, you can shoot this with the video and I'll show you some sample footage in just a bit, but this is designed more for photographers. I like to end mount, so there you have it. Now, anyway, let's talk about this lens in terms of the field of vibe of it and is this lens right for you because this lens has two camps and they're pretty much divided some people love it or they don't like it and the reason being it has a very vintage vibe to it again it is replicating that 1940s look so when you think about lenses made in the 1930s and 40s and 50s they weren't necessarily sharp lens they were designed for film when you look at modern lenses of today in terms of everything was well corrected the sharpness even wide open the smooth bokeh those lenses weren't concerned with many of those things. So as a result, the images that you get out of it are going to look like something taken from the 1940s, even when you're shooting digital. I mean, you can shoot on a high megapixel camera and it will still be soft and glowy wide open. And some people don't like that. And if you don't, then this may not be the lens for you if you'd like to shoot wide open in F2. But if you're into something a little bit different, you want something that people look at the image and go, what did you shoot that with? That's interesting. The bouquet is interesting. The fall off's interesting. That kind of that Hollywood glow comes into mind. And this lens may be something to consider to put into your bag. Again, it's not an inexpensive lens. It comes around 1,000 Singapore dollars, which is roughly around seven, 800 USD at the time of this recording. So keep that in mind. But uh, when you feel this lens and you use it, you understand that this is not some, you know, cheap third party Leica M mount lens that's out there on the market. This is really a lens that is made beautifully. And I would say it is equal to what Leica does with their lenses in terms of build quality. This is fully made of brass. This is exquisite. This is craftsmanship at its highest level. And that's why they're one of my favorite third-party lens manufacturers for the Leica M mount, the aperture ring, how smooth that is. Then you have the focus ring here, super smooth. Now these focus tabs here are very interesting, kind of a, a replica of the older lenses of yesteryear. You can change this inside the box. There does come with a smaller tab, so you can put that on there. It gives it more of a more modern look. But I like this because it adds a little bit more control to your focus ring. So if you want more of a finite focus at F2, you can get that with this much easier than with having just a little bit of a tab there. My personal opinion, everybody's different. The aperture goes from F2 to F22 on this. It's not six bit encoded on this, so you will have to assign your focal range inside your Leica camera, respectively. But you have to do that anyway with a lot of these third-party lenses. Back uh, cap is metal, by the way. There is no lens cap on the front of this, which was interesting. And the reason is that the Light Lens Lab said they actually created another lens element on the front to protect it. Now, the filter diameter on this is 43 millimeters, so I guess you can get a third-party lens cap if you want to or order one from Light Lens Lab, but inside the box, it does not come with one. Now, you do have a lens hood that does come with it. It does come in a separate package, by the way, because of the size. And it is brass. You can see the brassing on the edges of this as well. It's black, and that's how they have it designed. It's a screw kind of locked down on to this and is a little bit of a thin plastic ring inside of this so it's not going to scratch the front of the lens here with something i was concerned about because some of the older lenses of yesteryear they would scratch this doesn't so again attention to detail that's something the light lens lab does very very well but the moment you pick up this lens 345 grams there's weight to it there's heft to it but it just feels so premium it is so beautiful and if you've never tried their previous lenses like the 35 millimeter eight element that is pretty much the same design, this very similar optics as the original 8 element from Leica. That was my first video on this channel, by the way, check that out. And also the 50 Elcon, beautifully made lenses, absolutely stunning. And this lens is right up there with that in terms of the build quality. Now, what I'm gonna do is show you what it looks like here on a Leica M camera, because it is an M mount. So you wanna see what it looks like, but by the way, it's on my M7. And uh, as we mount it here, you're gonna see it absolutely looks beautiful onto this camera black on black, the paint just matches. It's absolutely stunning. Now they, this does come in a variety of different finishes. You have the chrome finish, you have the full black as I have here, black with a little bit of brassing on the edges, and you have a full brass version as well out there. So I do like the all black one. I think it matches beautifully to my camera here. And it just 
pairs well. And now I don't even use the hood, by the way, because I want the flares. We'll talk about that in just a second because that's part of the, the DNA of Cook lenses is the flare and the flares in the bouquet. But uh, nonetheless, in terms of viewfinder blockage here, there's nothing really that gets in the way of the frame lines at 50 millimeters, just at the slide bottom right hand side, the edge. I mean, you might see a little bit there with the front of the lens, but nothing that blocks the viewfinder. I use it with my SL2S reporter with the Nikon ZF as well, which I've shot some of these images that you're seeing here in this uh, review. At F2, if you look at the MTF charts, this is not going to be something that's going to compare to even, let's say, the 50 rigid that I personally own. That is a very different rendering lens than, than this. That is sharp, wide open. It's extremely sharp, stop down. This does sharpen up as you stop it down, but you want to shoot this lens wide open for the bouquet, for that look, that fall off, that very unique Cook look. So speaking of which, how does it compare to the Cook lenses of today? Well, I compared it to the SP3s, the newest Cook lenses out on the market. And I tried it with a good friend of mine, Peter Choi, who's also known as the Lost Kuma. You've seen him here on this channel, and he's also a big cinema lens guy. He's got a fantastic Instagram that shows all his lenses out there. And while this doesn't necessarily replicate the Cook look of today, it has a very unique look, and it does, and the bouquet does resemble that kind of cookish bouquet, the circular, a little bit of a haloing there. It's a very interesting look that um, some people will like and some people won't. It's not going to be for every type of photography. It's not going to be for every type of video, video application out there. But if you want something a bit different, you want to capture those lights in the background, you want something a bit more cinematic, this will give you that vibe to it. At the same time, you're not going to get that cook flair that we would know and love. And those flares are something that are so unique to Cook lenses, which unfortunately this lens doesn't give you. And I was hoping that they would give me that flare. As a matter of fact, I was more hoping for the flare than I was for the bouquet. For the most part, this lens does what it needs to do very, very well. But if you're looking for sharpness at wide open at F2, you're going to want to look elsewhere. The 50 Rigid, for example, or another Summicron, or maybe another lens out there in the lineup. Speaking of which, Light Lens Lab is releasing a 50 Rigid, by the way, but they're saying it is with the SP2 formula, which Maybe they're doing that to sort of differentiate themselves from Leica. I don't know, because usually they're pretty on point with Leica in terms of the optics and in terms of the, the overall image quality. Uh, maybe they'll change things up. That's an F2 to F16. This is F2 to F22. Maybe there'll be some differences inside the lens for the most part. But if it does replicate this, that will not be the rigid look. The rigid, even by today's standards, is a very, very sharp lens. And even on higher megapixel cameras, it resolves very well. Anyway, those are my thoughts on the Light Lens Lab 50mm F2 Speed Pancro 2. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. Are you looking to pick this lens up? Are you thinking, man, eh, maybe I'll hold off a little bit. There's some other offerings from Light Lens Lab out there that are more to my liking, like the 50 Elcon, for example, or the upcoming 51.2, which by the way, they're, they're going to be recreating that hand ground spherical elements, which is pretty freaking amazing. I haven't tried the lens, by the way, but it looks very enticing. Let me know your thoughts. And if you like this video, hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, more content coming your way. Thanks again for the support, guys. Really appreciate it here. And I will chat to you very, very soon. Take care.